I don't believe in magic. I believe in the sun and the stars, the water, the tides, the floods, the owls, the hawks flying, the river running, the wind talking. These are measurements. They tell us how healthy things are, how healthy we are, because we and they are the same. So ocean acidification is caused by increasing CO2. Increasing CO2 is what also causes temperature to rise or the climate to change. The things that we're seeing here in Washington State, you know, we have some of the most acidic oceans in the, uh, in the surface ocean. So we are sort of this leading uh, indicator or this, this place where we're going to see what a lot of the rest of the world looks like. Um, and so that, that makes it really important to do research here. But the processes and the ways that ocean acidification is impacting organisms applies to places all over the world. So the Washington Ocean Acidification Center is not a brick and mortar center, it's distributed and it's really a gathering of expertise. Our partners are vast, so one of those partners that's really important is NOAA. NOAA has an ocean acidification program and they fund work from both chemical and biological oceanography that we work intimately together with in, in teamwork. We uh, partner with state agencies, with tribes, with the shellfish growers themselves, and it's the coming together of these diverse partners that really makes the powerful. The OA Center was created in the same legislation as the MRAC, which we call MRAC. Uh, and, and they are our advisors. They help us maintain the plan that came out of the Blue Ribbon Panel. We help advocate for them uh, to do their work in a sort of stepwise fashion. The Blue Ribbon Panel was in 2012. Our first field season was 2013, and we've been um, implementing the monitoring, the modeling, and the biological experiments since then. To understand ocean acidification, we not only wanted to understand the water chemistry, but also the biology living in it. Biological processes are tightly linked to um, everything we do as humans, um, including the air we breathe and the food we eat and changes in those biological processes will influence cultural practices and they'll influence uh, socioeconomic benefits and human well-being. Our ocean acidification affects biological processes through multiple pathways. Um, among those are responses to increasing acidity and the associated decline in carbonate ions. And that change has the effect of of impeding calcification in calcifying species and also inducing dissolution of shells and skeletons that may already have been formed. The, the main project that we're doing is with these orange cup corals that are native to the Pacific Northwest and they're this way that we can look back in time and understand how ocean acidification has changed um, because of the emissions that we put in the atmosphere here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, but we also grow in the lab uh, tropical corals. And we do this because understanding fundamentally how corals um, uh, grow their skeletons, the sort of work that we can do in the lab, and um, how the plankton that we work with in other projects in our lab, how shellfish grow, grow their skeletons, understanding fundamentally how that process works can give us an understanding of how ocean acidification, how higher levels of acidity in the ocean will impact shellfish growth, will impact these organisms that are uh, really important for marine ecosystems. And so another strategy that we use is with um, oceanographic buoys. And that buoy is tethered to the, to the seabed and it's recording data in real time and actually relaying that back to the university and we um, publish that out on our website. So the live ocean modeling is a component of the Washington Ocean Acidification Center's strategy for dealing with ocean acidification because it gives uh, short-term forecasts of the chemistry of the water in the estuaries where people grow oysters that are affected by ocean acidification. Specifically, the live ocean program is looking to predict what's called a aragonite saturation state inside the estuaries. I would say that, you know, one interesting thing for me about live ocean is it connects to a number of different stakeholders. 
For the ocean acidification specifically, it's largely about oyster growers. For the dissolved oxygen levels, the people who harvest crabs, Dungeness crab in the coastal waters, especially the tribes. Suquamish lived a marine adaptation. Uh, we didn't live on the major rivers, so our people traveled far and wide in canoes to harvest salmon, to harvest crab, uh, and then waited on the tides to um, go out and harvest clams and green ducks and other sea life to uh, support our way of life. Our name Suquamish uh, means the people of the clear salt water, um, so we're, um, our identity is tied into uh, the marine environment. The ocean acidification um, is an issue of great concern to us and uh, we're doing our best to try to educate people about the fact that we need to make big changes and I really believe that it's in our best long-term interests um, and we need to get people to understand that uh, we need to coexist and work together with the marine system that we live upon. It looks so beautiful from the surface but there's a lot of impacts under the surface that we need to make sure are not going to damage uh, the web of life that uh, G. Seattle so um, you know, greatly described and made a priority uh, to Isaac Stevens and the Treaty of Point Elliot. So I think as a community of scientists, of environmentalists, of people that care about the resources that sustain us. We are trying to listen to the world. That's what the OA Center does. It's, it's really nothing less than sort of this existential work that, that I find really hopeful. Where do we want to go in the future? Well, I think we, we really want to stay the course because we're finding great power in the um, continued data to help us understand the spatial variability that we see um, in Washington waters. And so I think as our information has become more sophisticated and more um, lengthy in terms of the time records, we're able to put a better complete picture out and, and then people, whether they're a manager or a shellfish grower or um, just a private citizen can understand and, and think about what actions they may want to take.